It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars. Dimitri's here. Jason is not. One four-time Stanley Cup champion. And Darren, Darren, hey, how's it going, buddy? Very good. One rock star and Lars. Lars. Petey is not here tonight. But what we have is one of the coolest people in all of wrestling. I'm I'm proud to call him a friend. Here to talk about Hard to Kill, January 16th. Make sure you go out and get it on pay-per-view. Anywhere you get your pay-per-views. This man, Sammy Callahan, goes up against Eddie Edwards in a barbed wire match. And Sammy, I got to tell you, uh, I won't get many questions in because these guys are chomping at the bit. So let me knock my first question out, and I'm just going to kind of sit back and listen to everybody. Before you start your question, I have to point the obvious. I love how everyone has a professional setup. Their camera looks good. It looks like Dennis is streaming out of a Super Nintendo. (laughs) (laughs) That status for you, bro. Where's the quality, Some things haven't changed. I thought you were going to say, wait, 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 Dennis, using that friend, Sammy Callahan, a little loosely. That's what I say when he says that. (laughs) You know, to me, thank well, God. That's obviously a given. That's obviously don't, a given. Sammy, wow. don't, don't, don't worry, bro. I, I, when you're not here, you're gonna have to deal with this for the next little bit. But, I, but I gotta deal with it all the time. You should have heard so what he was saying that. about you because they did not call you all a friend. Right. <laughs> no, of course not. Thank God. Thank, thank you. Good, Dennis. Good job, bud. You're guys, learning. Good, guys, did, good. You see, did you see how Sammy just cut a heel promo using somebody else on you, Dennis? Listen. Uh, but my question, my question is now rhetorical. Are you going to take that shit from Sammy, bro? He's yeah. obviously going to take it. Yeah, absolutely. He's scared shitless. With a smile on my face. Do we, you hey, do we need smoke, Vaseline? Bro. Yes. <laughs> Listen, yo, we can take our clothes off, get rubbed up in Vaseline. We can go at it. Man. I ain't afraid of a good old fashioned Greco Roman Roman style wrestling match. Say it. Oh, oh. removed your dirty dancing photo, man. He would never have given you a grief. Hey, Lars, if you had his dirty dancing poster there, imagine what Sam would be saying right now. Well, you know what I mean? I understand, but I think Dennis wanted to take some of the heat off himself tonight, which is that, fine. That but is Sammy's always- third favorite movie, by the way. Dirty Lars dancing. has a mummy, and you got... What's your background? It looks yeah, like I'm you found it up like first. Uh, I mean, uh, yes. uh, if you figure out what's in there, if you guess what's in there correctly, you win, Sammy. Every guest is – nobody's got it yet. We can't yeah. figure it out. I think nothing's in it. That It's a trick Whoa. question. My Whoa. virginity. So what's your question, Dennis? Come on, you're holding up this whole thing. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. I uh, I didn't mean to derail us. You were going into a barbed wire match, and now – being backstage in a lot of impact shows, I've seen your process. I've seen PD's process, and I really enjoy watching how you guys get ready for a match, but a barbed wire match. And I don't care how you look at pro wrestling. A barbed wire match is a barbed wire match is a barbed wire match. Do you have to get mentally prepared be way beforehand for something hardcore like this? Or is it just another day at the office for Sammy Callahan? Man, that shit don't scare me. I've been in death matches all over the world. I've bled all over the world. I don't consider myself a death match wrestler. I consider myself one of the most versatile wrestlers walking this planet. But the guys that I looked up to wasn't the Hulk Hogan's, wasn't the Bret Hart's, it was the Terry Funk's and the Mick Foley's. This is just another day at the office. Mm. To be able to do this on one of Impact Wrestling's biggest pay-per-views ever is 100% the best place to do it. Okay. You know what? Ahead, before, before, the, before these two guys get started, Right off the bat, no pun intended, I hit somebody with a bat before by accident, you know, and I know Jason has too. And I, I want to know the actual feeling that you felt when you accidentally hit Eddie Edwards with the bat, because that was just, when I saw it, I was like, oh, shit. You accidentally hit somebody with a bat? <laughs> Actually, my brother was the one that accidentally hit the umpire with the bat. Hey, I've been hit with a baseball bat before. I've played wiffle ball in the back with steel baseball bats and hit a clink and get hit in the back of the face. So it's not like getting hit with a baseball bat is just another day at the office. But when I hit Eddie Edwards in the face, shit happens. That's the first thing that went through my head. And Eddie would have thought the same thing. That's the thing. Eddie is very much like me in the brain. Shit happens. It's professional wrestling. This ain't ballet. Because oh, I, I, I love y'all's intensity. And, and talking to you right now, I'm, I'm getting a totally different. I see your energy and stuff, but it's like on TV, you look like you don't, like if I was to see you at Ebor City in Florida somewhere, I see you like 
staring down somebody and whooping their ass. That's just the guy that you Bro, we can party in Ebor. I party, I've partied many a nights in Ebor. <laughs> that don't scare me either. But uh, no, it's one of those things. I ain't afraid to get in a fight because I've been in fights. I've had my ass kicked before. Taking an ass kicking doesn't scare me. That's not one of the things on this planet that scares me. Snakes, 100%. Sharks, the ocean, 100%. But getting in a fight doesn't scare me. All right, Sammy, on that point, then, to that, what do you, being a veteran in the sport, and like you said, you've created the niche for yourself, going into Saturday's pay-per-view where it is this match, what gets you excited still? Like you said, you're not worried about the beating, but obviously the source. So getting prepared for it, what still gets you up to, to go and take the beatings and take the blood and do that for the fans and do it for all of us that, that love to see Sammy Callahan get his ass kicked? Honestly, man, I just love pro wrestling. I know that might sound cliche, but pro wrestling is all I ever wanted to do. And be able to be able to do it at the level that I am now is absolutely a dream come true if you want to get all mushy gushy about things. But what really gets me hyped up about a match like this is the chance to be able to do something on national television on pay-per-view that people may not have seen before. Because we're not going to do the generic barbed wire massacre of old with the no road barbed wire. We're, we're going all in on this. We've changed up the concept a bit. And I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised with what exactly is going to happen on Hard to Kill. Lars? Yeah, you know, it, it's going to be a crazy match. And, I, and I've seen what you've done before in your past. And it's, and it, but one of the things I love about this style of wrestling and you in particular, and I think, uh, you know, these matches in, in, I can't say throughout history, but it's more about the shock value. Um, what I do love is when there's a story inside of this chaos, which I think that the match- That's where you get it. That, that's it, man. Well, this is- 100%. Like, I, I guess my question would be is like, you know, as far as when I look at a set list, I think of it as like a pro wrestling match. How I want to place the, the, the songs is you got to have your ebbs and your flows and your ups and your downs, your high spots, well, all these things. When this type of match- when you get into this type of match, are you thinking about it in a different way than a regular wrestling match? Or are you thinking about it like, um, you know, I have to do this, I have to do this to get this point across. Like, what is the psychology planning the match is, I guess, it, what I'm asking. The biggest difference in planning this match and another match is it's happening live on pay-per-view. It's one thing to have this match over in Japan where it's not live. It's one thing to have this match at the ECW arena back when I was younger and it's not live, it's taped or... With something like this, you look at a six, professional wrestling is uh, six, situational. There we go. Couldn't say the word. And this is no other. This is a different situation than a normal match. It depends what story you want to tell. I, I, I am big on storytelling and professional wrestling. I don't like just to do a death match or a hardcore match just to do it. This match has been built two for three years. It's long term storytelling at its best. You're Did that like last... your mouth water there, Dan? What's that? Oh, you dude, yeah. Storytelling. You know, no, you salivating over there. You know, that's why I love it. Like, it goes back to, I guess what I would say, Sammy, because we were talking before is, is I brought up that uh, your Jeremiah Crane character in Lucha Underground. I guess one of the things that maybe, since this is all you've ever wanted to do, because I got to do, play hockey is all I ever wanted to do too, but what are, were some of the things that now you know that I mean it, misconception or something that you had to learn is maybe things that are more important to Sammy Callahan as a performer now than maybe when he was younger. It's not about the moves. That was the biggest thing. When you're younger and getting in professional wrestling, I see a lot of the younger generation do this now. They're like, oh, I want to hit this cool move. I got to do it for the GIF. If I do this GIF, that might get me over. Even if a GIF gets a thousand retweets, that's for that one night people remember you. They're not going to remember you for the, the, the far future. They're not going to remember you in the, in the books of history, what makes people remember is moments. You plan everything around moments. You want to create moments that people think back in their head about a pay-per-view or a match or be like, exactly. You look at WrestleMania three, people say right. Steamboat Savage was one of the best wrestling matches of all time. But as a kid, I don't remember that. I remember Hogan slamming Andre. That's the moment. And in yeah, pro professional you. wrestling, I think we need to get out of the do it for the gift generation and do it for the moment and create moments that will last a lifetime. You brought up hey, Dennis, 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 I got one real quick. I, wanna, I, I just wanted to follow up on what DMAC had, and I wanted to go a step further to when you got, when you were in WWE as Sol Solomon Crow, because that was the first time I seen you 
but I kept an eye on you afterwards, like the Jeremiah Crane and Lucha Underground. Is it everybody's dream to go to WWE as a, you know, coming up as a wrestler and then, you know, you find out that there are greener pastures and because you really set, I mean, I, I watch you a lot. And like I said, I think you were crazy. And I also oh, saw you on the wrestling. And I saw you on the wrestling. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. On a, uh, what's that? The wrestler. Um, they had the documentary on Vice TV, and um, it was you and M- MVP talking about getting over, and um, and you got over for him. And I was just seeing the psychology that goes on with the wrestling and stuff, and what Darren was basically saying about the evolution of what you were and what you are now. 100%. And I think a lot of people's dream is like, oh, I got to make it to WWE. Uh, I think people are lying if they don't say, I want to have that WrestleMania moment. But growing up as a kid, like sure, WWE was the, the biggest wrestling company at the time. But I was a WCW fan. Like WCW was where I wanted to be when I was a kid. And then ECW came around and ECW absolutely blew my mind. Like that's where I wanted to be. <laughs> and I, I started getting into independent wrestling and Japanese wrestling. I wrestled in 10,000 seat arenas in Japan. I've wrestled all over the world. That was more important to me than ever being in WWE. Like if you're in WWE, sure, that's cool. Good for you. But I think now in the world of technology, when anything can be streamed and people control and access their content differently, I think just being on a television show is way different than what it is now. When people watch YouTube, people watch every streaming service, people, like I said, eat their content differently and I just want to be a legend like if Mick Foley or Terry Funk like Terry Funk's a good example Terry Funk didn't have a long run in WWE he went there later in his career and had a little bit of time but before that he still looked at as one of the greatest legendary professional wrestlers of all time and that's what I want to do now going back and you made the Wrestlemania 3 comparison where you could almost hark it back to hard to kill right now where you have this massive main event coming on and you, in my mind, you guys have the potential to steal the show. As, as Sammy Callahan, match placement, where is the perfect placement on this card for this barbed wire match, considering what what this pay-per-view means for the wrestling industry going forward? I think anywhere on the card, it has the potential to steal the show. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you every time I go out there in the ring, it doesn't matter where I am in the card, I try to be the main event and I try to steal the show. And I think that kind of camaraderie and that kind of competition in the back makes better television. It makes better professional wrestling. But if I was picking where I'd be on the show, I'd open the show. You open that show off hot. You just knock it down people's throats on one of the biggest pay-per-views, one of the most watched pay-per-views in impact wrestling history. And then you build the card from there. Like the main event's going to be its own thing. That is an absolute dream match. You can't take anything away from that six man. Cause me as a wrestling fan, looking at that, that's mind blown. But that's one of the great things about impact wrestling right now. I saw a writer recently say, I don't think uh, impact wrestling has an identity. I don't think they know who they are. And I have to absolutely disagree. I think impact wrestling knows who they are better than any other television company on the planet right now. Impact wrestling is the company where you get a little bit of everything. It's a buffet of professional wrestling. You like hardcore. They got hardcore. You like cinematic. They got cinematic. You like X division style matches. They got that. You like five-star wrestling classes. They got that. They got knockouts division, which is one of the best in the world. Impact wrestling is a company where it has a little bit for every wrestling fan. And, and it's a show that's easily digestible. You don't get bored watching it because it's always going to keep you on your toes and keep you guessing what's going to come next. Guys, I know we have a short time with Sammy tonight. We're really excited to have him. I can go longer. No problem. Uh, well, I hey, listen, I'm not going to stop it, but great. So, uh, DMAC. If well, it was just the, the other three guys, I'd be on it way longer, but I can only deal with so much Dennis. <laughs> uh, you understand that. I think to your point, Sammy, that when you when you think about it, and uh, you know, Dimitri and Lars and and Dennis, you know, when we think about you are a hard, you are this generation one of the hardcore performers, and I always looked at look at it because because I look at if they switched you after this feud, where are you going to go? Well, it could go everywhere else. I look at your relationship with Madman Fulton. I loved your cameos in the Talking Shop and Mania. And, and sometimes the, friends got to hold hands, bro. Sometimes, sometimes friends got to hold hands. Gotta, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Listen, and sometimes you turn into a zombie and, and headbutt your buddy in the nuts. I mean, it happens. But Just know, another like, day at the office, man. Professional wrestling yeah. in a nutshell. Absolutely. But I think that, that to your point, the camaraderie of why, and I think it's being able to do that, is wrestling is different. To digest it and you see the new wrestling fan or the different of what you're trying to do. Is there anything, any, um, I guess, uh, conflicts, confrontations or something you haven't done yet in your wrestling that, you know, maybe you look forward, you know, in the future to do? Because you, you can do sort of different kinds of stuff and you like the comedy, you like different things like that. Is there a couple other, maybe not characters, but different ideas that you got in mind in the future after this? My biggest thing that makes me love professional wrestling, you said, oh, uh, you're kind of like a hardcore wrestler. I don't consider myself a hardcore wrestler. I consider myself the most versatile professional wrestler walking this planet today because I love to be able to go to Japan and have a strong style knockdown drag out fight. I like to go to Germany, have a German style wrestling match. I like to go to England, have a very technical British style wrestling match. I like to go to Mexico, do a little Lucha Libre, go to Memphis, do a little of the Nashville style, then come to America and do everything. Like I like the fact that on one night I can be one person and the next night I can be another person because everything is situational. It all depends where you want to be at that time. And as far as what I want to do, like going forward, I am not a complacent person. I've been impact world champion. Sure. That's cool. That is a dream come true. It's not good enough. I, I could be the main event of every show. I could be a billionaire and it still wouldn't be good enough. Like nothing will ever be good enough. It's what's that next fix. What's that next thing that can make me more legendary. What can I do to add to my body of work? What, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Uh, I might seem like a spontaneous person, but I am controlled chaos. Everything I do has a purpose and everything I do leads to that next moment of what I want to do. I am a goal oriented person. You get one goal, not good enough. Go to the next goal. Yeah. I call you the reality check. Wherever you are, it's a reality check time. You know I'm a reality you know, check this world desperately need, needs now. Absolutely. Agreed. Lars? Yeah, you know, I mean I've been I've been I've been thinking about this and this is one of the questions that I think it's very pertinent uh, to you in particular because you've been pretty much in every Every company, you know what I mean. You've in, in Japan, like you said, Mexico. You know, you did the Lucha Underground here. You've been in the WWE, now in Impact, and now we see like AEW and Impact kind of sort of working together. Number one, do you have any strong opinions about how you think this is going to change the business? Because obviously, they've been doing this kind of thing in Japan for a long time, and even switching talent back and forth with you know United States companies over the years and in, in the 80s and 90s. Um, do you feel like this is a prime time for these other two companies to shine? And do you think it's like helping the business in any way? I think it's 100% helping the business. I think anytime companies can work together, it's only good for the television product. It's only good for the boys. It's only good for the fans. It's just getting companies to work together. That's always the hard part because one company might have one idea. Another company might have another idea. It doesn't always mesh. Right now, what we're doing, I think is game changing with professional wrestling right now. We haven't seen stuff like this since the early 90s when ECW first came on Raw uh, at the Manhattan Center. This is the type of stuff that like starts a wrestling spark. It's what the business has needed. I would rather, sure, I am very, very loyal to Impact Wrestling. I love Impact Wrestling. I wave that flag harder than anybody else. But anytime we can mesh together with other companies and create a Marvel Cinematic Universe of professional wrestling, I think that's what the business needs. And that's what makes the business successful. WCW wouldn't have been as successful if they didn't have all these talent exchanges. So why can't we do that now? I think that's huge. And I think the powers to be an impact when a couple of years ago, few years ago before the new regime took over i think impact left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth and it ruined a lot of partnership a lot of deals and i think the new regime scott demore don callis everyone that writes like they have changed this company for the better and they're building these relationships it's only going to be good for our company and any other company we work for hey sammy you mentioned earlier about making history and things like that as a professional wrestler which earlier um, you and Tessa Blanchard had a great phenomenal match. You put her over to become the first woman to hold a major championship belt. So I, I just want to know your thoughts behind that because, you know, whatever said about her, whatever is whatever, I'm still a fan of her. 
But um, your thoughts? That's a moment. People will talk about that for years and years and years to come. It was absolutely history. And it was something that I look at. I don't look at intergender wrestling as intergender wrestling. I look at intergender as pro wrestling. Like in 2021, we can be inclusive and do whatever we want in professional wrestling. If you don't like that, that's fine. You don't have to watch it. But if you do like it, there is a people that want to see that and in professional wrestling right now for people to say that's not professional wrestling blows my mind because it's straight up hypocrisy when people were cheering an undead wizard in 1998 shooting people with lightning bolts professional wrestling could be fun <laughs> professional wrestling could be whatever we want it to be professional wrestling should never be in a box professional wrestling should be out of the box and be whatever you want it to be at the time that's just my opinion on pro wrestling. I never think one thing's professional wrestling. Even if I don't like something or don't like a style, I still accept it and appreciate it for what it is because pro wrestling is whatever you want to make it. The term pro wrestling is for everybody is the, is the realest term there is. Well, see, I've always thought that like pro wrestling is, is a lot like traditional punk rock in the sense and I'm just going to go to my genre real fast because it's like punk rock accepted everything from a band called Crass, who were like these ultra PC vegans who lived on a farm out of society to Gigi Allen, who was talking about hate fucking, you know, somebody or whatever. And it like, it accepted, it was like this big wide broad spectrum, which I think th that exists in pro wrestling. And that's why I loved it so much because over the years, you can have a very serious match or you can have the guy, you know, the undead dude shooting light bolt, lightning bolts and all that stuff. But what, one of the things I wanted to ask you definitely for sure is now that you've been doing this for so long, you've had so much experience, how do you feel, like how much importance do you put on your own creative control? I'm the type of person, if I'm told to do something, I'm gonna make it my own and make it work no matter what. So I don't ever like the excuse like, oh, this is a terrible idea because I'll make a terrible idea good with whatever company I make, or I'll try my damnedest. But that's the best part about impact wrestling. It's one of the only companies out there that really unlock the handcuffs, take them off and give you some creative freedom. They are the only company I've ever worked for that goes, what's your ideas on your character? The only company I know where you don't have to hit up 18 different people to try to get an answer to do one thing. Our bosses are very easily, you know, you can get a hold of them very easily. They're at every show. If you have something, you can pitch it. If you want to debate something, you can debate something. They might have what they definitely want. You make it work, but they do 100% be open to everything. I, I can say being a fan of Impact and being close through PD, I've seen some amazing things Impact have done for the fans. Yeah, I've seen I've seen Ross walk out, Ross Foreman, who is Ross the, is the man. He, absolutely. The I've seen man. him walk out and give out shirts to fans just because he wants to see them smile. I've seen him pull wrestlers from the back because he was standing in a line talking to someone and he heard, you know, Sammy Callahan is this guy's favorite wrestler. And I, I've seen Ross go, well, hang on a second. Let me, let me see what I can do. And you, you guys come out and say hi, take pictures. This is a company that cares about its fans, that has built its new base off that. You've signed a two-year contract, which congratulations. I'm super happy. And I, and I, I, I don't think I'm assuming this, but you've had other offers, you turn them down, you take this offer to be the face of this company in this this great company. How important do you think it is for you to have made that move for other talent to see, hey, Sammy could have gone anywhere he wanted. He stayed here. Maybe this is where we want to stay. Yeah, you don't always have to play by the rules of other people and do what other people want you to do. Like, I think I am a, a very good interpretation of that. Uh, when you really think of things, I was one of the first guys around that time that just straight up quit WWE. I was in NXT. I could have probably been there for as long as I wanted, eventually made it to television, but it just wasn't working for me. I was not complacent sitting around there collecting a paycheck. I wanted to make history. I wanted to do something different in this business. And the chance I got to jump on Impact Wrestling when I did uh, really was a dream come true to me. I watched all the Asylum pay-per-views. I was a huge TNA wrestling fan. I, I wanted to be part of this company. And when I looked at it from the get-go, I said, I could go sign somewhere else because this is right when my Lucha Underground deal was coming up. I was like, I could go somewhere else. 
I can go here, here, there. I can pretty much do whatever I want in wrestling right now. And one of the main reasons I picked Impact Wrestling is because I believed in the management and I wanted to be one of the people that helped change the face of this company because that will look better on a resume and look better in the history books than winning a championship or being in a certain match. That's moments you, you, you wish for in your career and you're very lucky if you go to accomplish something like that. I think not putting all the credit on myself, but I think I've been a very big part of the growth of Impact Wrestling in the past three years. I've waved that banner harder than anybody else. So I've showed that Impact Wrestling is one of the places to be. Now with the Good Brothers coming in, that's huge. Like that shows, they have so many connections and so many people. I think it's showing Impact Wrestling is one of the cool companies again. And like, that's why you see such an influx of talent right now. People want to work for it because they're sick of being told what to do. They're sick of being held down. Impact Wrestling is going to give anyone an opportunity. It's the island of misfit toys where the misfit toys went. Wow, what that I is hear, very inspiring right there. Absolutely. What I hear that, that'll make me that'll make me want to be a wrestler. I mean, not a wrestler, but if I was a, re- a young wrestler, I would like to be under your wing because it looked like you are one hell of a mentor. You can come manage me, Dimitri. We'll, we'll make it work. Uh, I've done it before. You bring me a baseball bat, bro. It's good to go. Oh, I'll give you hey, a Delman Young hear. bat because he's known for hitting people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, anything else? This- uh, well, yeah, what I hear from you, Sammy, is uh, appreciation, right? You feel appreciated. You're part of something that is uh, that you feel appreciated. One last, I want to ask a question. Who and I appreciate favorite? it. That's the thing. Like, That's what I'm saying. Pe- and, and it, people and really it, get in their head and they have this ego and they think companies owe them something. I appreciate everything Impact Wrestling did for me because on my own, I couldn't have done it. I needed that platform to be able to do that. Impact Wrestling gave me that platform and they've been absolutely amazing to me. I appreciate everything I have. I have a nice house. I have nice vehicles. I don't have to worry about money. I can live my dream of being a professional wrestling because I bet on myself and Impact Wrestling bet on me. There's so many people out there that don't know what it was like to i dude i was so poor i was living on people's couches eating green beans out of a can just hoping to get a chance to train and be a wrestler so when i got to the place i am i 100 percent appreciate it and i don't look down on anybody because i've been in that same position you never forgot it bro and it bleeds out of you bro makes me a bigger fan and a bigger fan of tna and i can't thank you enough man it's been an absolute pleasure till we see it till i see it down the road i guess dennis were you wrapping up is that what you're doing uh, you know, I just want to be respectful of everybody's time here. Lars, Dimitri. Hey, I'm very appreciative to be able to talk to one of the craziest guys on the planet. Now I have an even better appreciation that, well, I did want to ask about Ohio's for killers, but, um, we'll do that another time, but, um, thank you for, shoot. Dude, I thank you guys so much for having me. Like, uh. You're not taking any time away from me right now. I appreciate this because it's another platform. I get a chance to talk to four, three amazing dudes and Dennis. But, uh, <laughs> it's a great time. Like I like to talk to people that are passionate about professional wrestling and passionate about life because that's how I am. Lars, I mean, he, he says he wants to talk to you. <laughs> you. <laughs> um, philosophical one. You know, one of my favorite things was Ohio versus everything. You know what I mean? That, that, and uh, just watching that play, and, and and so many things that you've said throughout the course of this of the of our conversation, um, you know, I, what's been sticking with me a lot is uh, is there one guy out there that is current right now that you really? I mean, I know you've pretty much wrestled everyone, but is there one guy that's like the unicorn that you want to just? I know you you can do anything with anybody. Get that. But if there's one guy, who would that be? Current. We're talking about younger guys or guys that are. Any, uh, doesn't matter. Just guys that are current. Not not. I'm not talking about retired guys. Or you know, I'm talking about somebody now that you that you've been wanting to like get into a program with or work with that you have. As far as Impact Wrestling goes, Eric Young is my number one. Uh, I think that's a match that people want to see. I think there's money on it, and the backstory of that, I think, has so many different avenues. Uh, from people that know me know I was originally supposed to be the leader of sanity in NXT. And then I left WWE and Eric Young stepped in. Uh, so our careers have kind of mirrored each other in the last couple of years. And I think as a match, I get the comparison all the time. We both have a pile driver finish. We both have similar characters, similar type people. I think that's the match people want to see. But as far as other companies, uh, 
John Moxley was my ex-tag team partner. I think there's business there that never truly got taken care of. And as far as dream matches go, a match between Sammy Callahan and Chris Jericho, I think, is mm. 100% money. Because you now have this opportunity to, to wrestle guys from a different promotion. And that's what kind of started to make me think, like, you know, what I would love to see is exactly what you just said, you and Jericho. Because I think that both of you guys, not you're great, both great on the mic. You're both technically sound both can do pretty much anything and just to see how you guys would build that match and i know there'd be well thought out and 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 according uh, or excuse me, not according um uh how would i say you would both come out of there looking about much better you know what I mean? I've, I've honestly used him as kind of an exoskeleton of a wrestling career because jericho is one of those guys that always no matter what always evolved he never stayed the same person he always knew what was hip what was going to be in and he jumped on those trends so he, he was always mixing things up he reinvented himself every couple of years and i've done that since day one like it's the perfect exoskeleton to look at in professional wrestling when you're really looking at the basis of how to build yourself for a long period of time. Because I don't know if there's anyone in wrestling history that's done that as long and successful and has so many moments as he does. I Do you have favorite guys to wrestle? Do you have like favorite guys like when, when you look and you know that you got a match with this guy because of the history or something like that where you're on the same page? Does, it, does that happen? I love yeah, wrestling Eddie that. Edwards. As much as we hate each other, like <laughs> me and Eddie do not see eye to eye on a lot of things. And that is the truth. That is backstage. We aren't the best of friends. But one thing is we are is we're professionals. And when we get in that ring, we create magic and we know that. We know that no matter what we do, it's going to be good. It's going to be money. And that's what we're doing going into Hard to Kill this Saturday. We're looking to blow people's minds and go that much more above and beyond. As far as guys on the indies or guys I've wrestled in my career, every time I wrestled AR Fox, me and AR Fox made absolute magic. Uh, a younger guy that is a total throwback a guy, Mance Warner. Uh, I've wrestled him now all over the country. Absolute love him. Absolutely. Me and him just linked together so well. Uh, guys on our roster, Trey Miguel, awesome. Uh, I, I He came up under me a little bit. A lot of the other Ohio guys, uh, absolute great. But uh, there's so many, one of the big things, there's so much good talent right now. And what makes people different is, like I said, making those moments because everyone's good now. Everyone can do the moves. Everyone looks good. Everyone can build a match, but not everyone can create those moments. Hard to kill January 16th. Make sure you get it on pay-per-view. We each, I think, have about time for one more question. Mine is uh, Impact AEW. D do you think going forward that could have a impact on a evolutionary character of Sammy Callahan going forward? You never know. It all depends what's going to happen with it. Uh, I think right now both companies are getting their feet wet and seeing exactly uh, how the business goes. And we'll see it. From advertising, the Good Brothers are going to be in a six-man tag on AEW this coming Wednesday. And then Kenny Omega is going to be wrestling at Hard to Kill on Saturday. The wrestling world is, is completely up in the air right now. Uh, but I think it's 100%. Like, I'm, I'm evolving again right now. Uh, I did the draw for a while. And then I went slightly into the hacker thing. And now I'm finding a happy medium of the draw and the hacker character and slowly became myself. You always got to evolve. Like, cause when I look at my character right now and how he would feel, he a hundred percent would take offense to new guys coming in. He would a hundred percent take offense to people bad talking the company because he is this company. This company is everything to him. And that that's my character to a T and he'll do anything to keep being the face of the company. He's a Napoleon. He has that Napoleon complex. Yeah. I noticed that because of your allegiance with, Ken Shamrock, what kind of influence has he had on you as a professional? Because he's just as intense. And I mean, like I said, look like y'all, y'all are Jackson fools up. Bro, look at him. He's in the best shape of his career right now. But I think it's one of those things, putting him with me and us being together is great for both people because A, it gives me a little bit more uh, clout because he's Ken freaking Shamrock. And B, I think, uh, Dude, I get him fired up. I get him riled up. I think he was trying to be too nice for a while. He was trying to be this nice guy. And I'm like, Shamrock, you don't got to be a nice guy. You're, you're the world's most dangerous man. You can legit do whatever you want. If, if people call you old, oh, well, you have one of the best bodies on our roster. You're one of the most legit badasses in professional wrestling history. You pretty much are one of the forefathers of Pancras. Uh, you are an absolute legend. So getting a chance to be with him is absolutely awesome. And uh, 
I'm going to keep firing him up because it's fun. Like I'll, I'm excited to see who he beats up this coming year because <laughs> if I had my way, I want to see him in a cage fight with somebody. That's just me though. Guys, anything else? G, thanks. No, I'm I'm good, man. I look forward to it. Like what, what I hear is, you know, what I'd love to hear there, Sammy, is that when I watch this match is that two guys that are in there that might not see eye to eye, but they have the utmost respect for each other and they're going to just give her. So this Saturday, look forward to it, bud. Thanks. That's professional wrestling. That's, that's how you make money. Large. Inside the ring, there ain't no beefs to me. It's well, called we're on the same team and we're working together for the best possible thing we can for the business ourselves and the entire wrestling world. I mean, I wish we had three hours because I don't think, you know, an hour is enough to 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 do. I, I'm really cool. I'm sorry, man. No, no, I'm no, no. Really cool. I, I, there's so many things I'd love to pick your brain about because like, like, you know, we all know you've been in so many companies and so many positions and wrestled so many different great athletes and wrestlers. And so, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. This was super awesome. Anytime. Let's, uh, let's do it again next week or the week after. Uh, and we can talk about the downfall out the, the fallout from fucking hard to kill. Sure. We would love it. Oh, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Awesome. We'll get together with Ross. Listen, on behalf of Dimitri, Lars, DMAC, go get hard to kill this weekend. It's Saturday, Saturday, January 16th. I'm ordering it. I know Dimitri. No one cares you know? if you're ordering it. <laughs> Dimitri then, Lars and DMAC all are getting it. Uh, I may go to their house now and watch it. Thanks, Sammy. You're not Social distancing. You're not going you're nowhere, not Dennis. Uh, <laughs> why? Just come, come. Hey, I told you, those dogs, they'll let you in. Sure, Dennis. It's the, the better, German Shepherd. They won't bite. Guys, better bring, you better bring Dennis, anytime you want to fight for a piece of the aggro crag, we'll go at it. I mean, Ooh, I am uh, in. I'm in. Hey, listen, you keep ducking me on Madden. We're going to have to make that. Dude, day. you don't want that smoke. I'll destroy you. Maybe not, but for for, for, for Text here. me your PlayStation name. We're playing in the next day or so. Wait, wait. Are you, are you a Call of Duty guy too? Yes, I've been. Oh. Dude, I, was I legit was le- almost late to this call because I was playing Call of Duty Zombies. And I was in the <laughs> middle of a long ass round that I've been trying to get this far of Matthew Palmer for a long time. I was like, damn, I got to do this interview, but I don't want to die right now. I, but I, I did it for not you. I did it for Lars. I did it for DMAC. And I did it for Dimitri. Because, Dennis, you. you can eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's the way we're ending this show, guys. Thank you so much. Listen, don't forget Instagram, Wrestling Perspective Pod. Go to the YouTube channel. Watch it now. Sammy, where can people find you online? You can find me on social media platforms, the Twitter at the Sammy Callahan, Instagram at official Callahan. If you want to buy my merch, go to shopimpact.com as well as check out my personal merch store, callahanmerch.com. See, I'm really good at that, Dennis. I'm better than you at the podcasting. Now watch the legend though. DMAC, where can people find you? Uh, I'm just not gonna. What? What? Just no, <laughs> any blue check marks? Anything blue check mark verified? Darren McCarty number four on Twitter. Why? Just to remind you, assholes, how many cups I have. Um, and then uh, Darren McCarty brand at DarrenMcCarty.com. If you just uh, groove or Google me, Lars. Uh, you can find me on. Yo, Twitter. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's the greatest. Like, yeah, you just go on. You find me on Google. Like, just, just Google just me, find bro. me on Google. Google me and find out what happened, Sammy. That's all <laughs> I gotta say. I got my hey, I got my tape out there, you know, on, on, in the best moments of time. We know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Lars? Hey, you can find me on Twitter, although I'm not there a lot, at Roots Radical01. You can find me on Instagram. Lars Fredrickson with the blue check, like my good pal DMAC. I'm on Facebook, but I ain't going to get put that out there just because I'm not really a fan of that fucking platform. To be yeah. I'm on Facebook, <laughs> but I'm also on Instagram at the Meat Hook Young, and I had that blue check as well. All right. Guys. And... <laughs> there we go, guys. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh. Does people use Gabriel Facebook? No. Is Facebook still a thing? Facebook? I don't use Facebook for anything. MySpace. Soccer moms, that's the only people that use Facebook right now. Don't forget Hard to Kill this Saturday. Go get it. Wrestling Perspective, Sammy Callahan. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.